everyone, it's Jack from Cultology.com back again with another weekly news update. How terribly, terribly exciting. First of all, we're going to talk about Brock Lesnar and some major changes in the UFC last night, which could have big ramifications in WWE, specifically in the Universal Championship scene. What Universal Championship scene? I hear you ask, and I don't blame you because I can't even remember what the belt looks like, to be quite honest with you. Um, we also have news of some unfortunate injuries, one to a WWE superstar and one to a New Japan star as well. And finally, we have news of a big major angle that just kicked off last night in New Japan as well concerning Kenny Kenneth Omega, one of the best wrestlers on this planet. So uh, let's get straight into it and let's take a look at all of the bloody news. First and foremost, let's talk about what went down at UFC 226 last night in Las Vegas, Nevada, because I know it's not strictly wrestling news, but it does have major, major ties to the wrestling world. Basically, in the main event, Daniel Cormier knocked out Stipe Miocic in the first round and is heavily rumored to be facing Brock Lesnar in November at Madison Square Garden. Now, this has been, I mean, that's just generally word on the street. People were tweeting about that before the match had even happened, before the fight had even happened. They were saying, whoever wins this out of Cormier, Miocic, they're going to go on to fight Brock Lesnar. Then, after Cormier did defeat Miocic, Lesnar was there and called him out and got all, you know, he made his presence felt and essentially just confirmed it. So, what does this mean for the Universal Championship? Well, one would assume that Lesnar's going to drop this on the biggest stage imaginable before November. And he's got to have enough time before November as well to, you know, train and prepare himself for that fight against Daniel Cormier. So, I mean, the obvious thing in my mind is that Lesnar's going to lose the, the title at SummerSlam. Surely that's what's going to happen. But then again, we were all absolutely certain that it was going to happen in the main event of WrestleMania 34. And look what happened there. Lesnar actually retained the title over Roman Reigns. So... I mean, if WWE want to swerve us again, they could keep the belt on Lesnar. And also, I imagine Vince might have a little, little thought in his head. Wow, imagine if I kept the belt on Brock and he carried it out in the UFC. That would be huge mainstream exposure for WWE. But I, I don't know if they'd do that. They'd probably, they've got to get the belt off Lesnar, haven't they? Haven't they? Haven't they? Let us know what you think in the comments below. And I'm trying not to sound too doubtful, but haven't they? Next up, some unfortunate injury news. First of all, let's talk about Fandango. There's not too much to go on here, but he tweeted saying, see you guys in six months or six to blank months, which seems to imply that he's going to be on the shelf for at least half a year, which is very sad because obviously Fandango, personally, I find him one of the funniest, most entertaining guys on the WWE roster, whether he's lower card or not. I just find him hilarious. Alongside Tyler Breeze, of course, as the fashion police or Breezango. But I mean, this is going to suck, isn't it, if Fandango's on the shelf for six months? And I can't think what else that tweet would refer to if it was not an injury, potentially one involving surgery if he's out for that long, unless he's going on a gap year or something for about six months, having a lovely long extended break. I hope it's that, because injuries are horrible things to happen to anybody, but if he is indeed injured, we'd like to wish all the best to Fandango and hope that he speedily recovers and returns to the main roster. Over in New Japan now as well, time to talk about another injury, a very scary one. Now, according to Dave Meltzer, Hiromu Takahashi injured himself in a match with Dragon Lee. And oh, it was just, if you've seen, if you've got Brian Alvarez's Twitter, he's actually uh, quote retweeted the gif in question. I can't remember the original account it comes from, but Dragon Lee hits Takahashi with a move. I can't even really, I can't even think of what the name was. It was one of those complicated sort of driving suplex kind of things. And Takahashi just sort of landed on his like front, like face first on the canvas, on his head, like kind of on his forehead and his body just followed, but his head didn't, it sort of stayed still. It was a bit like, oh. It was a bit grisly. Now, Melter's reporting that he actually broke his neck on this spot. Um, there's been no further confirmation apart from Melter's word on the Wrestling Observer Radio, but hopefully it's not true, of course. You don't want to hear about anybody in wrestling breaking their neck. And hopefully, if it is true, it's not actually that serious. To his credit, Takashi actually finished the match and retained his title, but man, that is not the sort of move you want to see anyone take, or certainly not landing in the manner that he did. This is going to raise a lot of questions, again, probably about the sort of reckless style wrestled by a lot of the Super Juniors over in New Japan, Takashi perhaps being the first and foremost amongst them in terms of his reckless nature or perceived reckless nature in the ring alongside the likes of, of course, you know, Osprey, Ricochet when he was there. Although he, he was a lot more smooth and controlled, I guess, than the other guys who are a bit more all out, gonna go balls to the wall and really put our bodies on the line, which is, I mean, it's fantastic to watch and it makes for some great matches, but on the other side of the coin, obviously, it can lead to injuries like this one. Hopefully, Takashi's okay, and if not, hopefully, his recovery is a quick one. And finally, if you don't want to know the result of the main event of the Cow Palace show last night for New Japan, just 
Look away now, skip to the end of the video. But essentially, in the main event, Kenny Omega took on Cody Rhodes defending uh, Omega's IWGP Heavyweight Championship. His first defense, I believe, since defeating Kazuchika Okada for it at uh, Dominion. Now, this match was a very intriguing one. The Young Bucks were present. They were trying to stop both guys from going too all out and being too all out, all in, no pun intent. Wasn't even the correct pun. Going too all out on each other and the Young Bucks were kind of playing peacemaker in the middle going, you don't need to do this, just end the match. He's already too hurt and that sort of thing. Eventually, Kenny did win and then the pair embraced, hinting at potentially a face turn for Cody. But that's not the big storyline I want to talk about here. That happened at the end when Kenny and the Bucks were posing atop the ramp with Kenny's belt and the Young Bucks had their tag belt as well and they were jumped by Tama Tonga, Tonga Roa and their father, Haku, who have now seceded, they've split from the Bullet Club, I've, I've forgotten the name of some the, the Hit Squad or something, they took off their, their Bullet Club t-shirts, they had new merch on underneath, always a good thing, and uh, yeah, everyone's been waiting for Tamatonga, an OG Bullet Club member, to really step from the shadows of the elite and that whole storyline that's been going on, and he finally has done. Looks like he's actually going to be the heel in this storyline, although the way in which he's been arguably kind of cast aside and overshadowed by the rest of Bullet Club over the past couple of years, I wouldn't be surprised if there was a lot of people cheering Tama Tonga in the upcoming title match, which will surely happen between Omega and Tama Tonga. Uh, Tama Tonga, for those unfamiliar, he's not the most natural promo guy. I guess that's why he didn't have too prominent a role in the Elite's YouTube series, but at the same time, he is a fantastically smooth wrestler, very quick and nimble in the ring, and I feel as though he and Kenny have a similar enough sort of style, kind of manic energy running around, that they could have easily a five-star match. So I'm very much looking forward to that. Hopefully, it's gonna be well worth the wait. So uh, yeah. There's no more news. Thank you very much for watching this video. I've been Jack from Cultaholic.com. You can follow me on Twitter at Jack the Jobber. You can follow all of us at Cultaholic and check out our Patreon too, patreon.com forward slash Cultaholic. And never forget, of course, to join us.